I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. November is a season of remembering. And on the Sunday nearest November the 11th, in particular, we remember those who gave their lives in time of war. Paul speaks of remembering at the beginning of our epistle reading this morning. Here, remembering with thanksgiving and with challenge. Remembering that it was the Philippians who were particularly supportive of him in his trials. And as he writes to them from prison, from a complex and challenging situation, he remembers with thanksgiving and invites them to continue to be with him, to act, to live, to support and to change the world. It's been my privilege uh, throughout my ministry to be involved with uh, different organisations of people who had fought in different wars with the Royal British Legion. Uh, with the RAF Association, uh, with the Normandy Veterans Association, uh, with uh, other very specific organisations uh, involved with people who uh, were being rehabilitated, working with the families and descendants of those who had died, and with those who had uh, done some very specific jobs uh, and uh, served in very particular ways during wartime. I never met anyone who wanted to do it again. And I met many, many people who wanted it to be that their service and their remembering of their fellows who had died would lead to change, would enable society, enable the world to live in peace. That what was fought for and striven for, and what was continuing to be experienced by veterans and their families would be worth something, would enable a change of heart and life and mind, would lead to a reduction in violence and the use of conflict for the imposition of power. I met many who had fought and were proud to have done so, and none who wanted to do it again, except for the cause of peace, except for the cause of righteousness, because there is a point at which we must stand. We must say that some things are wrong, and to work with everything that we have, not to impose will, but to resist evil. Peter asks a technical question of Jesus about forgiveness. Whether there was a law that would determine how much you had to do things before you could then say no more. And Jesus says, forgiveness is limitless. For it is in the mind and heart and will of God to enable all who have sinned to find forgiveness, to receive mercy and to live well. So this remarkable story of someone who had a massive debt which was forgiven but then did not forgive a tiny debt to him speaks to us of how we must live after cataclysm, how we must be after a time where we have been delivered, not to go back to old ways, but to seek the new, to bring in justice, to offer forgiveness, redemption, healing and hope. Yes, to stand against evil, but not to act in such a way that that evil is compounded by a cycle of violence. As we have been delivered, 
as the world is offered a new opportunity. So we live for justice and righteousness and offer that hope to all. Yesterday I heard for the first time uh, a poem which is by Seamus Heaney and comes from his uh, free translation of the play Philoctetes by Sophocles. It's quoted by Joe Biden during his campaign. Human beings suffer. They torture one another. They get hurt and get hard. No poem or play or song can fully right a wrong inflicted and endured. History says don't hope on this side of the grave. But then, once in a lifetime, the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. So, hope for a great sea change on the far side of revenge. Believe that a further shore is reachable from here. Believe in miracles and cures and healing wells. Call miracle self-healing. The utter self-revealing double take of feeling. If there's fire on the mountain and lightning and storm and a God speaks from the sky, that means someone is hearing the outcry and the birth cry of new life at its term. It means, once in a lifetime, that justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. In these days of remembrance, may we honour the sacrifice of so many by making hope and history rhyme. Living for hope, bringing healing, forgiveness and love in these challenging days and for Jesus' sake. Amen.